Welcome to Tuesday Night Home Fellowship. I'm going to bed. Peace. See you on Sunday. Peace. <laughs> Randy, Mom, Randy. <laughs> All right. Good evening. Nathan did his part, so it's time. It was so weird watching him up here talk. Because I don't know if you notice, he goes like this and does weird things with his hand. Just like his dad. But anyways, if you have your Bibles tonight, let's go over to Luke chapter 6. We're going to continue with our theme of Lordship. And so we're going to talk about what it means to follow the Lord and have the Lord be, obviously, Master Lord of our life. Luke chapter 6, verse 46. It says in verse 46, But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he's like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, a stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation against which the stream beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great let's pray father we come before you lord this evening and god we commit this time of the study of your word to you and god we reverence you we honor you we lift you up tonight and we pray that you would minister to our heart. God, that you would speak to us. Lord, that you would really take Luke chapter 6, this portion of scripture, and Lord, would you allow really the heart to be exposed to us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Just to give you guys just a little bit of a reminder, if you didn't watch or listen last week, What we're doing is we're talking about Lordship. And just to give you guys a quick review, the word Lord is literally not the name of Jesus, but it is the title, the position of Jesus. It's where we allow Jesus to be in our life. And so when we're calling Jesus Lord, what we're really doing in the New Testament, the Greek, is we're referring to Jesus as Master we're referring to Jesus when we call him Lord as ruler. We're, we're referring to him as the supreme one, the overseer of our life, the captain, the leader, whatever word you want to attach to Jesus having the preeminence or the most important position in your life. What you're really saying or what you're really making reference to is Jesus being Lord. And so Jesus is his name, Lord is the place, the position that we allow Jesus to have in our life. And if you were listening last week, we mentioned that over these three weeks, we're going to break these sessions into three things. And so if you didn't write them down last week, maybe you might want to write them down this evening. The first thing we took a look at, just to refresh your memory, was in verse 46, the question asked by Jesus. And so last Tuesday evening, we took a look at the question asked by Jesus. Look at verse 46 with me real quick. This is what Jesus said. He said, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? And so Jesus, you remember, was addressing a crowd of followers. And within that crowd of followers, there were obviously men, women following, yet each of them had their own motive for following Jesus. And most likely there were some, a small percentage of that crowd of followers that were actually following Jesus out of a pure motive, out of really calling Jesus Lord, out of really allowing Jesus to be the master of their life. And yet there were probably, there was a large batch, quite a number of these followers who addressed Jesus as Lord, and yet their life most likely did not reflect Jesus as the ruler, the captain of their life. And so Jesus asked the question, 
Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? And if you're with us, we talked about really the heart of calling Jesus Lord is obedience. Because he says, if you're going to call me Lord, I expect one of the conditions to be that you obey me. And so number one, we took a look at last week, the question asked by Jesus. Tonight, we're going to take a look at number two, the illustration told by Jesus. So after Jesus gives the question of lordship, he all of a sudden begins in the next verse, in verse 47, to give us a picture, an illustration of what, of what lordship looks like. And we'll get into that in just a moment. And then number three, what we're going to take a look at next Tuesday evening, number three, we're going to take a look at the revelation given by Jesus. What do I mean? Well, when we sit before the Lord, and every time God ministers to our heart, I pray that there's revelation. I pray that there's something that the Lord reveals to us in the midst of Bible study, in the midst of Him speaking to our heart. And so next week we're going to take a look at the revelation given by Jesus concerning His Lordship. So tonight, number two, what we're going to take a look at is the illustration told by Jesus. And really what we want to answer tonight, and prayerfully in our few minutes together studying the word, the question that I want to have answered is this one. Maybe you might want to write it down. Does Lordship matter? That's what we're going to focus on tonight. Does Lordship matter? This is what I mean. Does it really matter? Does it really affect my life? Does it really impact me on a daily basis if I really allow Jesus to be Lord? What does it look like? How does it play out in everyday existence if Jesus is really the Lord of my life? Does it even matter? Can you even tell the difference between a person who Jesus truly is the Lord of their life and someone who Jesus is not the Lord of their life. Can we even tell if Lordship matters? Well, Jesus tells us, beginning in verse 47, why Lordship matters. And he tells us through an illustration. Would you read it with me, verse 47? He says, whoever comes to me and hears my sayings, remember, Lordship from last week equals obedience. So whoever comes to me and is obedient because I'm their Lord, this is what he says, I will show you whom he's like. So what I want to do, Jesus is saying in a sense, is I want to show you what it looks like when I am the Lord of someone's life and they are obedient to me. Verse 48, it says that person, he is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. Now notice the contrast as we get into verse 49. It says, but he who heard and did nothing. So the one who either confesses Jesus as Lord or doesn't even confess Jesus as Lord or has no care if Jesus is Lord, obviously they're going to live a life of disobedience. And so the one who does not have Jesus as Lord, verse 49, the one who is not obedient to Jesus in their life, it says he is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation against which the stream beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great and so Jesus gives us two illustrations of lordship if you guys are taking notes the first illustration that he gives us is a picture of a man whose house is built upon a solid foundation verse 48 and in the spiritual context, his life is built upon 
Jesus Christ as his Lord. The second example that we're given of lordship in this illustration is the picture of a man whose house is built without a foundation. Verse 49. So this is really the picture here, a solid foundation, a man who has no regard for the lordship of Jesus Christ in his life is equal to, similar, likened to someone who builds a house yet does not lay the proper foundation. And so this illustration, really what it does is it shows us the heart of God and reveals, check this out, and this is what the Lord showed me, it reveals that God does not discriminate when it comes to who he allows to go through the difficulties of life. Would you guys go back with me? Notice the wording here. In verse 48, it says, and when the flood arose, we're referring to the man with the solid foundation. But verse 49 says, he, when it comes to the man without the foundation, Jesus is not the Lord of his life. He too is eventually going to have a flood arise in his life. And one of the things that the Lord really was showing me in this illustration was it doesn't make a difference who you are. It doesn't make a difference how you live per se. Jesus is Lord, Jesus is not Lord. It doesn't make a difference what you do financially. You give to the Lord, you don't give to the Lord. You're rich, you're poor. It doesn't make a difference. There's going to come moments, seasons, times in our life when a flood comes, when a storm makes its way in. It's the same thing as living in a place like this. You know, we have seasons where it's very calm. We have seasons where the weather begins to get a little crazy. But throughout the year, one of the things that is guaranteed is that every once in a while, a storm is going to come. And the crazy thing is, it doesn't matter if you live in LA or if you live somewhere else, every once in a while, for the most part, a storm is going to come. And it's going to be against the foundation. It's going to be against the house, weather-wise. And spiritually speaking, a storm, a trial, a difficulty, a challenge, something painful, something that hurts, is going to come along your way. And it's going to be against the foundation of your life. But the difference is, and where lordship really matters, is what is going to happen when the storm comes. You see, when the storm comes and Jesus is Lord of your life, it's going to beat against your home. It's going to smack against your foundation. But because your life is built correctly, because your life is founded properly, it's going to beat against your home, against your life, but you're not going to fall. You're going to remain steadfast. You're going to remain solid and movable. Yet if the Lord Jesus is not the Lord, the master of your life, when, not if, but when the storm beats against your life, because there is no foundation, because Jesus is not Lord. Notice the end there of verse 49. It says, but when he heard, or he who heard and did nothing, is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation, against which the stream beat vehemently, and notice the word here, it says, and immediately it fell. But what really strikes me is the end of verse 49. It says, and the ruin of that house was great. The ruin, the fall, the pain, the danger, the image of a fallen, wasted, destroyed life. He says it was great. Imagine... We've seen a lot of people like this in the church. People who were going about life, 
showing up on Sundays, on fire for a season, got all emotional at a retreat, had a good old time on a Sunday, but yet they never really made Jesus the Lord of their life. They really never surrendered all to Jesus. And so calling Jesus Lord was simply out of lip service, but, it, but, but the fruit of their life, Jesus wasn't Lord. And, it, and, and we've seen it, where the moment something happens, the moment a breakup takes place, the moment a bill comes out of nowhere, the moment pain or tragedy strikes that life, their life is in ruin. Everything's falling apart. Why? Because they weren't founded. They weren't grounded in Jesus as their Lord. Yet on the flip side, we've seen people go through some really crazy things in their life, painful things, hurtful things, tragedy, things that just blindsided them. You know, I think of Pastor Greg Laurie. You know, I think of Levi Lusco. You know, and these guys losing children. You see, in those situations, we've heard of people who've completely gone off the end, walked away from the Lord, turned to things and addictions and, and trying to find the remedy to make the pain go away. And yet we've seen their life fall and become ruined. We've seen people get cheated on. We've seen marriages destroyed by bad decisions. And we've seen people's lives just completely fall apart. Why no foundation? But we've also seen people struck by the same tragedy, struck by the same pain. People hurt by the same situation. And yet we've seen them come out somehow. I don't even get it. But we've seen them come out stronger. We've seen them come out okay. We've seen them survive. We've seen them look up. We've seen them hold on. We've seen them press on. We've seen them draw near. Same tragedy, same pain, same type of hurt. And yet somehow... Lordship mattered in their life. And so the question tonight was, does Lordship matter? I'll tell you, we don't really know. And sometimes we can't tell if Lordship matters until the stream comes, until the flood beats, until the storm hits. And then I'll tell you, when that happens, like I said earlier, not if, but when it happens, we're going to be able to tell if Lord said mattered. And so we're going to pray tonight. And I pray that if you haven't allowed Jesus to be Lord of your life, if there's an area that you're living with, unsurrender to him. If you've given Jesus 75% and yet you've been holding on to 25%, you see, one of the things about allowing somebody to be their master is that you have to relinquish. You have to surrender 100% to your master. And so I'll tell you, lordship matters. And I pray that you wouldn't hold on to that thing, that percentage, that part. But let's surrender all to the Lord today. Father, we thank you for this evening. God, we thank you for your word. And Father, we thank you that your word gives us the answer to whether or not lordship matters. And God, right now, maybe some of us can't tell if lordship matters. For maybe many of us, life is just simply smooth and we're coasting along. Yet, it's not a matter of if, but when things happen. When tragedy comes, when pain comes, when we're blindsided, when the storm beats against our life, 
where we're going to see if lordship matters. Because if you are Lord of our life, that storm will come and beat against our life and we'll remain. We'll be steadfast. We'll be immovable. But Father, for some of us, when that storm comes, when that pain hits, when that thing blindsides us, it's going to destroy us. And our life is going to be ruined. And great is going to be our fall if you're not the Lord of our life. And so, Father, I pray that maybe tonight some of us would handle business with you. In Jesus' name, amen. And tonight, before we're finished, what I would like you guys to do, whoever, whatever home you're at, whatever, whoever's listening tonight, would you have a time in your home or in your little um, discussion group, and would you talk about surrender tonight? Obviously, I pray that you were able to allow the Holy Spirit to connect the dots as to whether or not Lordship mattered. But we can talk about and we can know in our mind intellectually that Lordship matters. But practically, we have to surrender in order for Lordship to matter. And so tonight, let's just talk. You know, let's pray for one another. Let's pray that we would live a life that's fully, 100% surrendered to the Lord. And so those of you who are home leaders, group leaders, take that word surrender and do with it, lead your time as the Lord would, would will. Peace. We'll see you on Sunday. Hopefully you'll be at church. God bless you.